Jessica. Okay, um, we're here with uh, Rodrigo Salazar, uh, who is uh, the editor-in-chief of the now defunct uh, Urban Latino, which I wrote uh, several stories for, and uh, now is uh, behind a uh, sports marketing uh, initiative called, uh, uh, what was it again? Uh, Soccer Senseis. Soccer Senseis. And what's the reason that you uh, started this uh, company? Well, first of all, Ed, thanks for having me on. It's a, it's a pleasure to be with you here. I mean, we go way back to like sure. the 60s, to mm -hmm. uh, the Young Lord days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but um, no, you know, great friend of mine, and uh, it's really an honor to be back uh, with you and you know, hang out with you, vibe with you. Um, we started Soccer Senseis because um, I go back to what we did with Urban Latino Magazine. When Urban Latino Magazine started, there wasn't a vehicle that uh, represented the young Latino uh, in the United States, you know, that didn't talk to them as, as a bicultural person who grew up listening to both English language music and Spanish language music at the same time. So uh, that's why we started Urban Latino Magazine. And I saw the same groundswell of a, of a movement uh, with soccer, with the sport. Um, and it wasn't a movement of just Latinos, it was a movement of all ethnicities, whether you were black, Latino, Filipino, uh, you know, African. There was this um, new interest in in the sport of soccer that I said, you know what, I need to get on this because this is interesting to me as a soccer fanatic. Um, and I wanted to be a part of that movement because I felt like a lot of the people that were doing interesting things in in soccer were very creative. So I was like, I, I want to get on that wave and I want to contribute a little bit to what's going on. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going really well for us. We um, were out for a while and uh, we, like I told you, we, we did an art exhibit uh, for the Euros and uh, we had a couple of artists that use soccer as a muse, uh, do some pieces for us or just play some pieces that they did. And we did it at a sports bar, uh, like a, a English pub called Carragher's in Midtown. And we also did it at a more like a Latino night, nights club spot um, in, in the 20s and uh, called Slate. You know, I'm missing that. Um, so, you know, we were just kind of showing that there's a groundswell of movement of a lot of interest for the sport. And it's, it's really exciting to be there at, at the cusp of it because young kids are really um, responding to the sport. They're, um, you know, they're wearing more soccer jerseys and everything else, and that's how it starts. You know, now you see the sport on television more than you saw it anywhere, anywhere else before. Um, you know, FIFA, the, the, the game which I play religiously every day, uh, you know, is something that's part of people's vernacular. They play FIFA, they, mm. watch, the, they watch the sport on TV, and they support the teams, they support the players, and that's why we started it. Yeah. Well, I mean, certainly, like, the soccer or football, you know, uh, in this country, it used to be, like, uh, some European ethnic, but, like, in the last uh, 10 or 15, 20 years, I mean, it's really been Latin Americans that have been one of the main constituencies, and that's why, like, the Telemundo broadcasts are so big. Yeah, you know, yeah. I prefer yeah. listening to Telemundo, actually. Everybody does. Yeah. Everybody does. <laughs> Come on the camera, Ed, because you're... You okay. Know, yeah, so, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll right, right. see you as well. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's funny that you mentioned that because uh, Soccer Twitter, I'll call it, everybody's talking about how bad the uh, other network that's covering it in, in English is doing. Uh, they even had a uh, piece where they were saying, oh, you know, Stalin wasn't as, good, as bad as you, you think he was, you know. He's something that, you know, kind of made people say, wait, what, what are you guys talking about? You know, uh, definitely watching Telemundo. Even people that can't speak Spanish are watching Telemundo. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely, you know, I, I think as Latin Americans, we've always been into it. Um, and, I mean, I, I, I want to talk about a little bit about uh, Andrew Blanco, Blanquito Man, from uh, King Chango, Venezuelan kid, who was the lead singer of, uh, I would say, the, the number one Latin rock band in uh, the United States and definitely was huge in Latin America as well. And he, uh, as you know, he passed away from cancer. And I remember specifically talking to him about uh, this movement, about this thing about, you know, soccer and what these kids are into and playing sport. 
And I felt like, you know what, there's something there. Because I saw this guy on stage, you know, wearing crazy jerseys. I'm like, oh, I, I know what you're doing. I know I know these teams. I know what, you, I know what you're about. And, and talking to him about, about the excitement of the sport kind of coalesced. I said, you know what, I got to do something because there's something there. And uh, he was a very brilliant designer. He designed a couple of uh, logos. Florida, Florida Panthers, right? Yeah, Florida Panthers, uh, Toronto Raptors, the basketball team. He, he designed uh, the logos for these mm-hmm. for these teams. And you know, it's just a real loss for the, for everybody. As not as not only as a somebody who's you know so influential in music, but as a friend that you know I never really talked about it. Um, and he had a real a lot to do with what we're doing in terms of spearing us forward and, and seeing how this is going somewhere, you know, and seeing that, you know what, in Latin America is big, in Europe is big, and now in the United States, it's now a thing where you see kids, they'll, yeah, they'll, they have their NBA jerseys, but now you have a Messi jersey, you have a Ronaldo jersey, which, you know, maybe 10, 15 years ago was unheard of. So you're wearing, we're here with Rodrigo Salazar um, from uh, Soccer Sensei, Sensei's. And he's here. Uh, you're wearing this uh, shirt uh, that says Rakai. Is Rakai. that how you pronounce it? Yes. So uh, tell me about the story behind uh, making up this uh, shirt here, which is about the French uh, soccer team. French, yeah, French national soccer team, the '98 um, champions. The first time that France won the World Cup was in '98. And uh, I was watching a documentary, which I believe is still on available on Netflix, called Le Bleu. Uh, and it talks about the story of this team uh, and how they were used as a political football by the right wing, whereby they say, oh, the right wing was like, oh, you know what, if you're not a white Frenchman, you know, you're not really a Frenchman. So a lot of these black and Arab players uh, were criticized for, you know, the, the whole thing with the anthem, which sounds very familiar to what's going on now with the NFL. And uh, it was a particular scene in, in it where they, uh, Sarkozy says, "Oh, you know, we're gonna get rid of this Rakai. Gonna, you know, that's it." And then they go, they cut to uh, Lilian Thuram, who's one of their, you know, iconic players, one mm-hmm. of the, you know, who won the, the, the cup for them. And he's like, "I'm not Rakai. I, that's not who I am. You know, I'm not. La uh, Rakai means like a low life. Mm-hmm. He's saying I'm not a low life. You know, I'm I'm a Frenchman. Mm-hmm. You know, my, my grandmother or my mom comes from come from a country that's not France. You know, with Africa or Arab." or Arabic country, but I'm a Frenchman, and I won you this cup, because if you look at the best players from that team, and even for, even nowadays, it was Zidane on that team, you know, uh, Thuram on that team. You know, these are uh, Arab, black and Arab players that won them the cup, so mm-hmm. we, we did a, a T-shirt that is modeled after that uh, 98 win with the word Rakai in quotes, which alludes to the Virgil Abloh uh, thing where he puts everything in quotes, and you got the number ten, which is for uh, represents the captain Zidane, mm-hmm. who's uh, who's of uh, Arabic descent. And doing even more research into it, I said I, I looked up Just Fontaine, who has still has a scoring record for the World Cup. Turns out he was born in in uh, in uh, damn what is it? I think it's Morocco or mm-hmm. or Casablanca or something like that. So he's yeah. definitely not born. He wasn't born in Paris. Let's say. Mm-hmm. So he has the record for the for scoring in the World Cup for France, and he's he's an Arabic player. He's a rock guy, but mm-hmm. you know that's the one who won the cup. And so it's like an ironic thing, like yeah, I'm the rock guy, but I'm the one. I'm, we're the best at this game. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, and actually, I remember we had an email exchange when I was uh, saying that this might actually be related to the word that was rakas used to describe yeah. themselves. Yeah, yeah, oh, rakas. Yeah, yeah, pa- Panamanian. Uh, Hip hop, uh, reggaeton, reggae act from Panama, and Las Racas. I mean, I, I didn't even think about that, and you're like, oh damn, you see, yeah. that's, that's how language is. It's a romance yeah. language, and yeah, and there it is, you know. And um, so, actually, you know, since I don't remember that well, uh-huh. I mean, because I don't follow, uh, you know, I've been following the World Cup pretty much, but I appreciate I'm not... the, the the Adidas jersey you're wearing, though. I like that. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know if you're wearing as you can see. No, yeah, I mean, I I buy little uh, no, at, at t-shirts for the Puerto Rican national team. He's uh, he's a forward. <laughs> So Zidane, did the headbutting incident have anything to do with the racism that was directed towards? No. Him? Okay, that was just. Uh, that, was, that was just uh, the okay. Italian player, I believe, it was Matarazzi, mm-hmm. calling his sister or his mother a whore, uh-huh. and he just lost it, pretty much. So. Okay. Yeah. And are there what what is the situation with the players of color on the French team right now? I mean, right now you got uh, Paul Pogba, who's 
you know, criticized daily for being, you know, a certain type of player. And uh, he's he looks like he should be a defensive, mid, defensive midfielder, but he wants to just create. He wants to be like Ronaldinho. Mm. So just because he looks a certain way doesn't mean he's going to play a certain way. Mm. That's, how, that's how he is, you know. He's... He's doing his thing, you know. Uh, Antoine Griezmann, he's you know he's a Frenchman as well. He's he's like you know he had a big thing where he was gonna supposedly gonna go to Barcelona. He stayed with Atletico Madrid, and France is still in it um, in, in the cup. You know, uh, no, just, just yeah. You know, is it gonna I'm be sure they will. Or not? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know, Belgium is strong. Playing. <laughs> yeah, they're playing Belgium. Oh, okay. So we'll know what happens. That's uh, tomorrow. Uh, yeah, it's tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. And um, so, wow, was it, what did I want to ask? Um, uh, okay, hold on a second. Um, what was I gonna ask you? Uh, the is, is, I got Puto chant, which is the oh, yeah. thing. Right, we yeah, yeah. About, we we gotta talk about uh, that. Colombian yeah. national team, right. salsa. They got they're known for like right. salsa moves. You know, yeah, we have to talk about the Colombia yeah. game. Yeah. Um, and um, and I also wanted to ask you about uh, Neymar and the how everybody was complaining that you know. Yes. <laughs> He, he, I saw it like he was stepped on. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I was following it now, but I didn't follow it then. Uh, I don't know. You know what? I lost my train of thought. But that's. You want to write it down? Yeah. Um, if you need to write it. It'll come to you as you should yeah. write it. Um. Oh, I don't. I don't know if it was that important in a way. Um. Yeah. The the French team now. Oh yeah yeah. I know what I was gonna say. Right. And and it's just you know, I don't know if all this is gonna make it on the. That's fine. We'll see. All right, and so we know now, of, uh, of course, uh, there was just riots a few years ago uh, in Paris, mm -hmm. um, particularly yes. from the Arab communities. The, and, they call the banlieues, yeah. which is that's like the, the ghettos. So and we, everybody's segregated. Yeah, right? the, way, the yeah. way Paris is, and yeah. think about it's everything is in the middle. All the, all the tourist attractions are in the middle. It's a beautiful city. Been there mm -hmm. twice. I mean, definitely yeah. recommend it. It's it's amazing. But all the tourist streets in the middle, Eiffel Tower, Art de Triumph, etc. But then on the outskirts is where the the banlieues, which is like the ghettos, and that's where everybody lives. And you know, there's a lot of police repression, and yeah. there's like there's been riots. But again, a lot of the, the, the best players come from the banlieues. But it's like Mbappe, who is like, mm -hmm. to me, he, he's scared about, about to do something that Pelé did, which has become the, the, the youngest scorer of, uh, I think, the most goals or something. Mm -hmm. Um, he's from there, you know. He's, he, he, it's funny thing is that he was born the day that they won the World mm -hmm. Cup, the '98 one. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's all circular. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the other things that have been going on. Um, I did. I noticed as well as you. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, did you see the graphic about the the graphic uh, cartoon about the Puto chant? Uh, yeah, I, I looked at that. It was really well done. Yeah, we, and the we, nib. Yeah, yeah, we 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 did a whole um, episode about that because mm. we really felt strongly about coming out against that, you know. And I know that was somebody who is in soccer Twitter was like, no, but you know, that's just very bro -y, you know, like, oh yeah, that's mm. that's how they are. That's, that's how it is. But you can't do that. Mm. It, I mean, replace puto with spick. Replace mm. it with uh, N I G G A and uh, the N I G G E R. You know? mm. Uh, not A, mm. and it's the same thing, you know. Mm. You can't uh, demean somebody, a, a whole group of people like that, especially yeah. to me. It's like it's the high rate of suicides in, among uh, young gay youth. You know, you don't you don't want to you don't want to do that to somebody just on some stupid, st stupid stuff. You know, I mean, I don't I, don't, I can't curse, but uh, it's just you know what? Control your people. You know, control them. Like they want to come to the games, so you know, stop being a holes. You know, th there's no need for that. There's other things you can chant. There's plenty of songs, Mexican or otherwise, you can sing or whatever. It, it's you're not you're not taken away from the fan experience by ch chanting a you know homophobic slur. So I, I think now I think they're getting it. Mm. I think this, uh, the players came out and did some uh, public service announcements, announcements around it. So you know, I, I, and I also think that they're uh, getting the people that did it. They're like finding them and saying you're not coming back to the, to the stadium which is the ultimate you know a deterrent I think not being able to see your team uh, perform so yeah stop that already it's no need for it so we don't need to bring up that Molotov song right <laughs> you know what yeah yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean it's that was another time it was the, the 80s or 90s yeah. whatever 
uh, it was still messed up, you know. That, yeah, it's the nineties. Yeah, it's the nineties. You know, and you know, I, I, even they came out yeah. and said, you know what, we, we, we this is messed up. We shouldn't have done that. Yeah, and I'm sure they still perform it, but you know, it's it's you know, Ted Nugent was was a rock mm-hmm. god, and look, I mean, come on. <laughs> so let, now, let's talk a little bit about Colombia, Rodrigo. Um, you are from uh, Bucaramanga, right? Bucaramanga, yeah. And um, so that game, yeah, I watched it. That was a really tough one to swallow. I mean, yeah. did you really think that was a blown call by the ref and the to that resulted in the goal by England? Uh, I mean, I, I think in general the the the, the uh, referee was kind of siding towards England, uh, but. Ultimately, I, I think we show that we can perform on a, on the world stage, and nobody can say, "Ah, you know, it's an easy one for uh, for anybody." That we just played Colombia. That's it. It's it's over. You know, definitely gonna win. And that was my thing. I said, you know what? Let's let's show ourselves. If if we're gonna lose, let's lose like with a head held high. And we went to penalties. And when it goes to penalties, anything can happen. You know, you can have the world's best goalkeeper and the world's worst striker, and you never know what can happen. The world's best goalkeeper is going to mess up and the world's best striker is going to score the goal of his life forever. So, you know, it's a, it's a crapshoot. So I'm, I'm happy with what the team did. I obviously wish that they would have uh, advanced, but we showed ourselves. As in Mexico. Mexico, you know, definitely uh-huh. uh, did that. I think Mexico is, uh, should be a lot further along because there's so much money in the Mexican league, so many sponsorships, so so much interest, so many people who go to the games. So for them to have such a budget of, uh, you know, and budget and resources, and not play the way they did, the, the, the way they did, you know, congratulations to them because that's that's where they should be. You know, that's that's where they should, this is how they, how they should be playing now with all their resources. So they're good. So, but you know, we should mention that England is a pretty good team and they have they're okay. players of color. Yes, they do. Like, I, I think most of the Europeans that I've won recently have, except for Germany does not have players of color. They, they do. They, they do, do some. Yeah, they do. So most of the European teams that win mm-hmm. uh, have players of color. But, um, and then also uh, you wanted to talk about, oh, but you know, I, I wanted to mention that, um, you know, watching it myself and, you know, uh, my neighbor downstairs, uh, mm-hmm. uh, there's a couple, a uh, uh, Puerto Rican and a, and a Colombian, and they were screaming through the whole thing. And um, so I felt really bad what happened. And, and then also watching it, like, uh, being up three to two um, on penalty kicks at that moment, mm-hmm. uh, boy, I mean, that must have been tough. Uh, I don't think, I, la- I remember the last time I saw a team up three to two yeah. uh, and then lose, because they, they missed the last two kicks. Uh, I'll give you an analogy of the uh, English national team, which I'm really proud of. I worked on it for a while. So, um, it's like the English national team is is like if you put members of the Rolling Stones, Massive Attack, and Harlem Spartans, who are like <laughs> their gr- uh, grime group now, mm-hmm. um, current, and you put them together in a studio uh, to make a song. You're not gonna get crap because one is like you know, rock and roll, the other one is like trip hop. And the other guys are like, you know, UK drill, or grime. So individually, yeah, forget about it. England is like very, very influential, uh, you know, in music and let's say also in, as, a, as a sport. But as a team, you know, they just can't put two passes together, you know. So it's really hard for them to, to go forward if there's no coalescence, uh, collision of you know what, this is the guy who's going to pass to, you know, mm. there's no pl- real play, interplay between a lot of the guys. Mm-hmm. They don't have that one creative midfielder or midfielders that are going to you know, s- s- conquer down, say, you know what, give me the ball, I got this, get in your position and do what you got to do. And But they, they do have the individual talent, so I, they have, do have a bright future. So staying with the music theme, uh, yes. the uh, Colombian ha- national team had a special uh, salsa dance. Uh, I have a couple it? of special salsa dances, yeah. 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 And is, was it like dance to any particular, like was it Nietzsche or... or no, it's, or it's, it's more like champeta yeah, yeah. stuff. Uh, now, okay, you know, right, right. Which is like something we talk about is like how yeah. like salsa is pretty much dead. And right. And listen to like yeah. reggaeton and yeah. champeta, is the, right. you know, which is great. Oh, hey, that's what we're listening to. What are you going to do? Uh, yeah, yeah we should explain that champeta is something that existed yes. before reggaeton, which was on the, on the coast, and it featured Cartagena. rapping, and, and it had like uh, sukus and African influences. Sa- sound Africa. systems yeah. of right. Jamaica, 
huge speakers, uh, very African influenced, a lot of, uh, you know, guitar, uh, definitely look it up. Uh, aside, I, I was playing, I was in an Uber, and this guy was from Africa, I forget which African country, but it was definitely uh, French, he was speaking, and I said, you know what, I, wanted, I want you to listen to it for Champeta, because I think you're going to like it. Mm. And everything, everything I was playing, like every video I was playing, mm. he's like, ooh la la. Ooh, la, la. <laughs> so he made me write down all these champeta uh, artists and, and tracks so he could listen to them later. And I was like, wait a minute, this is great. This is what it is. I mean, this is a French, you know, somebody from, from, uh, from uh, Africa who's listening to champeta, who is, you know, who is just African music, but, you know, it's, it's, he's talking to me about it in French. So, yeah, it's, champeta is, is great. Uh, is it going to cross over? Probably not because reggaeton is such a, a force. You know, reggaeton killed salsa. You know, uh, yeah. bachata killed merengue. You know, and you know, I, I mean, I went through. I give I went through all the credit in the world, but I read listen to Anthony Santos, the real guy. Uh, Luis Vargas, the old bachata, has more more soul for me. Mm-hmm. It's like if I'm gonna listen to rock and roll, I'm listening to punk rock, mm. not like Green Day. Mm-hmm. So, right. <laughs> you know, that's that's just my own personal. Um, but yeah, so what was the question? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, the the salsa dance uh, oh, yeah. that became kind of a trademark for them. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what they do is they, they take uh, yeah. all these videos of these players go viral. Like mm. they, they're like they do that little dance, and everybody comments, oh yeah, the Colombian training session, and they show them like do their dance, and then every time they score, they have like a little special dance that they do, mostly salsa champeta, and you know what? That's just who we are as a people. You know, I mean, we're we're we're. Um, we're, we're happy we're, and we have swag you know Colombians play with swag I mean we, it's not it's a very uh, open free type of, of game that we, we play in soccer uh, maybe not as good as, as, a, as a Brazilians but it's our own we have we definitely put our you know stamp on it mm-hmm. I was impressed yeah yeah um, and I wanted to also get to Brazil a little bit because you know again like you're more of a expert on soccer I, you know, I remember Neymar from the last World, World Cup. I'm the type of person that watches the World Cup and I don't watch anything else. So, okay. so Neymar uh, is seems to become. He's trying to become the the world's best player, especially uh, Messi's been eliminated and mm-hmm. he's getting older. Now, this thing about how I mean, is it really true that he uh, he flops a lot or more than most people, or is because I on Twitter I saw just a lot of people really annoyed with what happened. What yeah. he got stepped on by the Mexican guy. Some people said he stuck his leg on purpose to get stepped on. I mean, what do you think about all that? Well, you know, Neymar is he a diver? I mean, yes and no. You know, the guy plays a way that is very exciting. That it that is you know the way you should play. You know, a jogo bonito as they say. Uh, that the, the Brazilians play and it's a great great thing I'd rather watch that than a, you know like it's like it's like okay do I want to watch the Warriors go see Warriors you know like run and gun fast break or do I want to see the, the San Antonio Spurs you know the pedantic you know just go up the up the up, up this court very slow I'd rather watch the Spurs you know so I'd rather, I'd rather, watch, mm-hmm. rather watch something more exciting so when he does these tricks and flips and things like that things of that nature defenders get a little pissed off Let's, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. You know, they're like, listen, you don't need to do all these tricks, but sometimes you do because they, they help to get around the defender. So, you know, as, as the game goes on, they'll kick him and whatnot. So, yeah, he, does he get kicked? Yes. Does he sometimes dramatic? Is he sometimes dramatic about, about it? Yes. He's also dramatic about it. Um, it's a little bit of both. You know, that's the way he plays. Uh, well, Messi, when, you know, he, he, he also gets fouled, but I, he's so short that I don't know what it is he just gets right up he does not die no, and, you know every, people that uh, criticize Messi they say that Ronaldo's better One, the only criticism that they can't put on Messi is that he, he's a diver because he does it he, they, they, they throw him on the floor and he gets right back up unless he's injured obviously so you know that's, that's, that's Neymar he's the new star uh, you know Messi is, is winning years maybe he has one more World Cup uh, I think he still has a couple more uh, trophies in Barcelona Ronaldo is probably moving to uh, Juventus, which is like today's big, uh, you know, news flash. So he's leaving Real Madrid. He's going to Juventus uh, because Real Madrid is like sick of him, mm-hmm. you know, because he's a he's a diva, you know, okay. he's a diva. Uh, yeah. So Neymar is the guy. You know, mm-hmm. Neymar's young. He's he's hip. You know, he has his own sneaker line like the the other guys do. But he's a new guy, and kids want to be him. 
Okay, before you want to get to the last couple of points, okay. um, I thought uh, what we could do is I could ask you about like <clears throat> who you think is going to take it all, and then if like next Thursday, like you were, you had one of the last two teams, because I think by the time the Sarahs, yeah, it's only going to be the last two teams. Okay, is that true? What is next Thursday? Do you know? Uh, I think it's in two weeks. It's final. So uh, no, isn't it next week? No, no, it's well this oh, weekend. Really? No, yeah, you're right. The next week, yeah, next week is is, is fine. So yeah. by next Thursday, all the play will be over except the except last, the, yeah, and, and and the consolation game. Yeah, the, the consolation game. All right. So if you name a team that goes to the you know final, then we'll just leave it in, and if not, you know, we'll just. I, I don't mind. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind being yeah, wrong. I'll just cut it out because yeah. you know it's, it happens all the time. It's yeah. Just, the, the wonder of sport right. is that you know yeah. you never know what's going to yeah. happen. Yeah, but no, but what I'm exciting. saying is like if you name a team that gets eliminated tomorrow, it's going to seem silly if you say it next uh, Thursday. Okay. So tell me like or you know your favorite for you know who's going to take it all the World Cup. I would like Belgium or or France, but uh, France because I I have an affinity to, to the French team. Uh, I'm an Arsenal fan. That's my English team, and there's a lot of French, uh, you know, je ne sais quoi there, if you, if you will. Um, but I also like Belgium because, pound for pound, they have a squad that is killer. Like, you know, they great forward, great midfield, great defense, great goalkeeper. But again, they're young. They don't have that cachet. They haven't really gone through these, these steps of... Being a world beater yet, so they, 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 you know, I feel like sometimes they shrink when it's when it comes to like the pressure moments. I mean, they they had to go almost to the 90th minute to beat uh, Japan. They were down 2-0, and, and it was by wonder goal that they won. You know, Lukaku, you know, it's crazy. I mean, I'm sure you can you can uh, Google how what happened there, but uh. Uh, yeah, I I think that it definitely I hate saying Brazil because it's, it's yeah it's, it's a no brainer. It's a given that Brazil has a chance to win it. Uh, Brazil, uh, France, or Belgium. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you want to talk a little bit more about um, the sh you know the shirt? Like, uh, is it something that you're selling? Or well, something? yeah, yeah, definitely. If you, a... if you if you uh, if you you know if you think it's something that you you want to rock, you go on to our website sagarsenses dot com and uh, buy it. You know, it's uh, it's cool. You know, it's, it's people love it. I mean. The people that, that I've talked to in, in the sports world and the fashion world, they're like, yo, this is, this is good. And we're going to start doing other stuff. We have other things, you know, on the bench, as they say, other designs that we're going to do, you know, just to do, like, show that we, we're here, we're creative, and we're, you know, doing it, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we do. Is there a, did you mention a website? Yeah, soccersenseis.com, which is just redesigned, as they always say, oh, redesigned website. I, we, it was so re that's um, yeah. S-E-N-S-I-E-S. -E yeah, soccersenseis.com. Uh, it's uh, if you, it's we're on Instagram as well. If you want to follow me on uh, on the Twitter, it's uh, Rodrigo S seven one eight R O D R I G O S seven one eight. I talk about uh, soccer a lot. I talk about uh, the, our new fascist government and uh, what you can do to stop it. I talk about abolishing ICE and I talk about the Knicks. So if, if the these <laughs> if these uh, topics interest you, uh, give it a follow. Well, what do you think about Knox as a draft pick? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, the Knicks, the Knicks. You know what? <laughs> He's not that bad. I think we have a regime now that kind of is like uh, disciplined enough to know what to do. Uh, we're gonna be bad for another year, but um, if we were able to get Kyrie, Kyrie Irving, please come to New York. Mm. Please come home to the Mecca, to the Garden. It's the Garden. Any other, uh, you know, two-bit little stadium anywhere? Nah, the, you, the Garden <laughs> is where it's at. And everybody knows that. Um, if we get people like that, I think we'll be okay. Uh, but I mean, who can stop the Warriors? Not mm. even LeBron oh, yeah. going to my LA, <laughs> which is a straight up right. like, oh, I want to make some movies yeah. uh, right. deal. He doesn't care. He don't care. Yeah. He, he has his rings. If he becomes the first player to win with three different teams, yeah, it's great. But he's still mm. LeBron. He's still like a billionaire. So. He's there for the chance. I mean, you never know. They might get a major injury in the Warriors, and then he'll be there to take advantage of that. And, or KD comes to New York. Oh, right. KD comes well, to I think Fisdale, you know, not a bad choice. I think there's a little bit of credibility there. And, there, you know, I don't. did you think that Dolan floated rumors he's selling the team, you know, to try to help him? 
I don't know. <laughs> Dolan. <laughs> you know, Dolan is uh, he, he's a character. I mean, what can you see about, about James Dolan? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I like the fact that mm-hmm. one day he said, you know what? I don't know anything about basketball. I'm this, this guy's <laughs> new guy. This guy this guy's running it. This guy's doing it. You know, I thought Isaiah was was gonna be great, and, and that was a debacle. I thought, you know what, Phil Jackson, oh my God, now, now we got it, now, this cannot go wrong any way, shape, or form, it may have gotten tar- mm. so bad, I mean, the only thing he did well, I think, was Porzingis, I mean, mm. who would have thought that this kid yeah. from Latvia was going to be like the Porzingis, yeah. you know, great, I mean, he's wonderful, Yeah. I mean, the kid was crying when, when they drafted him, mm. and now he's like, oh, Porzingis, you know, Yeah. so, you know, it, it's, 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 uh, it's a mess, but it's our mess, so our level of mess, and, <laughs> Before I die, even if I'm in a wheelchair, I'm gonna, there's going to be a, a victory parade down Madison Avenue, and I'm yeah. going to be there, you know. Yeah. So this last thing you want to mention? The, this oh, no, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. you know, uh, right. one of the things, soccer Twitter, any Twitter, yeah. uh, music, anything. Right. The best conversations are coming, going on outside of the actual offline. So uh, myself and a couple other people uh, in the Latin media space, uh you know, we, we have a, uh, a WhatsApp group and we talk a lot about, a lot of crap about politics, uh, a lot of stuff about food. You know, we can't go on there for lunchtime because somebody's always like in San Antonio mm. or like El Paso and they're like putting up pictures of like nachos. I'm like, mm. my guys, really, this is, I'm so hungry right now. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's funny how, how it works where social media is great, but then the real story stuff, you can't say in, in public, is, is going on outside of, of that realm, man, on the WhatsApp, on Slack, and everything. And uh, I told him, hey, you know, I'm going to be on, sh- on the show with Ed. And he's like, oh, the Godfather, okay. <laughs> you know, so, you know, definitely w- w- want to come, have you come on and uh, be one of our uh, mm. one of our uh, people on, on, it's called Latin Media Chat. And uh, guys, you, you can't go on because we see a lot of uh, un PC things about uh, artists and politics and stuff, but, you know. As invited because as the as the Don, you know, as the man. I mean, you know, I want to be here without Ed because he was the one that I read the village voice. So I'm like, oh man, really? People writing about this crap now. Okay, there's there's a chance that I could do something, you know. And, and rest in peace, village voice. And uh, you know, this is Mary. So, yeah, so, those are the days. Those huh? are the days. Yeah. Okay, so uh, thanks for coming on uh, Living in Spanglish, uh, WBAI FM, uh, Rodrigo Salazar. Uh, Un abrazo fuerte and uh, good luck with uh, Rakai and uh, you, go sir. out go out there and get that t-shirt. Yes sir. Def- definitely get it uh, and watch a lot of soccer, you know, and support the, support the cause, support, support the uh, you know, the movement of, of young sports, you know, and it's cuz it's really it's really growing as you can see I didn't tell you about how big it is. And you know, let's get Trump out of office, please. Yeah, let's not forget that. Yeah, let's not forget that. And not, not our president. And don't forget Puerto Rico, because that's that's also right. Stuff. That's right. Thank you. Okay. All right, that was good. That's that was like.